Hey, I'm Caleb from Caleb's Aviation. By now, we're probably all aware of the CRJ900 crash that happened up in Toronto earlier last week. However, for those of you who aren't familiar, I thought I'd give you the first update here, and then dive into the video a little more into what we know, the accident that happened, and the aftermath as a result. Hope you enjoy the video. For those who are unaware, a Delta Airlines CRJ900 operating a flight from Minneapolis to Toronto Pearson Airport in Canada took off for a routine flight. Everything seemed to be going well, and until the plane arrived in Toronto, everything was routine and problem-free. This service from Minneapolis to Toronto is a routine service for Delta Airlines to be operated by Endeavour Air, the regional carrier they own. And this, of course, is the route map for those who are interested. The aircraft operating the flight today, a CRJ900 November 9032 X-Ray Juliet, is 16 years old at the time of this video. The plane came in to land, and for some unknown reason, flipped upside down and skidded on the runway. Emergency services were ready at Pearson Airport, and luckily, there were no fatalities from what could have been a very dangerous accident. Also, if you're interested in seeing more of Toronto Pearson Airport, check out my video, The Best Places for Plane Spotting. This crash is interesting for a couple of different reasons, especially since I've flown on board a Delta CRJ900, as featured in this video of mine I made quite a few years ago. The aircraft is quite widely spread, as are many CRJ regional jets, operated by Endeavour Air, the carrier Delta flies it for under Delta Connection. Endeavour Air is the largest operator of the CRJ900, primarily for Delta. As much as many people, myself included, love to hate regional jets like the CRJ, there is no denying they will get you from place to place safely and efficiently, and most importantly, cost effectively, which is what Delta Airlines and the other carriers who rely on the jets depend upon. The CRJ900 holds between 50 and 100 passengers in different configurations across the country, and it's quite widespread, being the most successful CRJ variant ever developed. This footage, as I mentioned, is from the video I took flying aboard a CRJ900, also operated for Delta Connection by Endeavour Air. I don't have a ton of footage of the CRJ, hence why you're seeing this footage. However, there are also a few more things worth covering now, and it's time to get into some of the analysis in this video. First things first, we have now received some actual footage of the plane coming into land prior to the accident. I'll let you see that now. The footage shows the CRJ900 coming in to land on a pretty normal approach, but then there's something important. I don't see the flare, the moment where the plane pulls up to let the back wheels touch down first, prior to the nose. Also, it's likely that the conditions being snowy and icy did contribute to this accident. However, that's not a certain thing. But you can see the plane clearly rolls to the side very slowly, meaning the flare must have been flat. For those who are unaware, a flare is a critical part of any flight, especially in the landing phase. The flare is when the pilot pulls back on the stick to make the main landing gear on the belly of the aircraft touch the runway first. The flare is not only important for the pilot's aiming point of where to put the nose wheel once they're on the runway, but it's also an important phase of flight in slowing down the aircraft to a safe landing speed. It also allows the flaps to get maximum lift on the aircraft so you don't stall or drop flat. In flying an aircraft, there are two critical phases of flight. There is V1, a rotation speed on takeoff, where you pull up the nose wheel and rotate the elevators to give you lift for takeoff, as seen here in this footage. And then there's the flare on the landing roll, which we've already discussed. The flare is when the pilot pulls up on the nose wheel slightly to give maximum lift on the flaps, tilt the aircraft nose into the air slightly, and let the back wheels touch the ground, as seen right here, or in this footage. After that, the nose wheel hits the ground, the reversers turn on, and all the other things that help slow down the aircraft, like the brakes, the spoilers, and the flaps, and everything help slow down the aircraft on landing. Landing with a shallow flare, or no flare at all, 
can not only be a rough landing for the passengers, being usually quite hard on impact, but it can also make the aircraft more difficult to control, especially if they're crosswinds, as there were in the footage on this accident. In the end, this accident, although dangerous, had no serious issue as there were no fatalities, thankfully. Additionally, we can chalk this accident up to several poor factors, many of which were outside the pilot's control. Factors such as a strong crosswind, poor visibility, and a wet or icy runway can easily turn any routine flight into a nightmare scenario. I also feel for the most part that the pilots did their job and did so quite well, considering there were no fatalities from what could have been a much worse accident. I also think the news and media, including some other YouTube channels, may have blown this accident out of proportion. I think it's also important to remember that pilots are highly skilled, highly trained professionals who do their jobs safely and efficiently every day worldwide, and this was just an unfortunate incident. I do not think we should blow this out of proportion, and the main point of this video was to show that even though the pilots may have been at some fault, most of the reason for this accident was not their fault. Well, I hope you've enjoyed this long and complex explanation to a pretty simple situation gone bad in the case of this accident. I hope you've enjoyed the video. As always, make sure to leave me a like, comment, and subscribe. Let me know what you thought of this video and if you enjoyed it. I appreciate it. And until next time, you know the drill. I'll be wishing you blue skies and tailwinds.